Hello and welcome to this lesson on radioactive waste, which is part of the nuclear physics topic in AQA A-level physics. So what we're going to do in today's lesson is we're going to detail the different types of radioactive waste and how they are treated. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to explain how fuel rods can be disposed of, describe how radioactive material is removed from a plant and then finally explain the balance of risks and benefits in the development of nuclear power. So we're going to be covering the following part of the AQA A-Level Physics Specification 3.8.1.8 Safety Aspects. So in an induced nuclear fission process the following change takes place. Beforehand you've got a uranium fuel and a startup neutron source, so either normally beryllium or polonium. Then after the fission process you'll have some unused uranium fuel, smaller nuclei fragments from the fission process itself, used control rods and free neutrons. And in addition to this you'll have energy released as kinetic energy of the products due to the mass defect. Now the material afterwards is commonly called nuclear or radioactive waste and it must be dealt with to ensure that it doesn't pose a health risk to the humans or the environment around it. So if we think of the following, before the fission process you've got uranium-235 and uranium-238 isotopes. Now both these isotopes only emit alpha radiation naturally. Now this won't actually escape the fuel rod casein. So the, the, the reactants in this particular process are not going to pose a health risk to people in the surrounding environment. But after fission, the fragments of the, of the nuclei produced in the fission process will emit beta or gamma radiation because you tend to find that the products of nuclear fission tend to be very neutron rich in their composition so are very radioactive and in addition in the fission process you'll have times when uranium-238 encounters a neutron and turns into plutonium-239 which is actually a very active alpha emitter which if not handled carefully can actually cause lung cancer so the products of fission leave us a problem of what to do, not the actual reactants of the fission process. Now, the products of fission can be used practically in a medical diagnosis. However, fission is carried out at high temperatures and the fragments produce beta and gamma, so as such precautions need to be taken. Now, all radioactive waste presents a danger to humans. This is because radiation is a stochastic effect. This means there's no maximum safe dose. Any dose of radiation no matter how small can present a danger to human health. Now the higher the dose of radiation, so the higher the activity, the greater the risk to human health. So this leads us to classifying radioactive waste into three categories, each category with a different level of precaution in different storage method. So you've got high level radioactive waste, intermediate level radioactive waste and low level radioactive waste. Now most high level radioactive waste, which is the waste we think about when we consider radioactive waste, comes from nuclear power stations, hospitals using radioisotopes or specialist universities. Now it's important to note that in the UK the government policy states that the disposal, disposal of any form of radioactive waste must be in accordance with legal regulations and by approved disposal containers until its activity is insignificant, the same as the background. So all companies, all universities, all schools, all hospitals, all nuclear power stations must comply with this. But how do we dispose of each type of radioactive waste. Well, with low-level radioactive waste, which is objects such as lab equipment, protective clothing, or tools which have been contaminated in use, they're sealed in metal drums and buried in large trenches. Intermediate-level waste are objects with a low radiation activity or containers which held radioactive materials for a long period of time. Now, the, this waste is sealed in drums that are encased in concrete and then stored in specially constructed buildings. Now, these purpose-built buildings have walls of enforced concrete. Now, again, and here's a picture showing the outer structure of one of these buildings. Now, high-level radioactive waste tends to include the spent fuel rods, the fissile materials, and the fuel cans, what we contain our fuel rods in. Now, this tends to include uranium-235, uranium-238, and plutonium-239. Now, it's important to note that what happens is the spent fuel rods are first removed by remote control, so a human doesn't actually handle them at any point, and they're stored in underwater or cooling ponds for approximately a year. This is because the fuel 
few rods are still emitting thermal energy due to further radioactive decay and the few rods are still emitting alpha radiation. So these underwater ponds firstly cool the few rods down and secondly block any alpha radiation emitted by the few rod. Now the few rods are then transferred to a large steel cask and the unused uranium and the plutonium are removed for further use. Now in the UK this occurs in the Thorpe reprocessing plant found at the Sellafield power station. Now it's important to note that the name of taking the unused uranium and recycling for another fission process is called reprocessing. So you can see here our reprocessing plant. After reprocessing the unwanted materials are then stored in sealed containers in deep trenches and this must be stored for centuries because they contain radioisotopes with long half-lives so they can't contaminate the food chain or the water supply. So in the UK, containers of high-level radioactive waste are securely monitored at the Sellafield nuclear complex. So these containers of waste can only be accessed by workers at Sellafield. Now, other countries store radioactive waste in the same way or in underground caverns which are geologically stable. Now, some countries, such as the United States, mix the waste with molten glass to store them as glass blocks. Now, in the UK, we're now starting to turn our radioactive waste into molten glass. Now, the process of turning a substance into glass is called vitrification. Now it's safer to keep our radioactive waste vitrified or as molten glass since the radioactive waste cannot leak out of the container or become part of the water cycle in the environment. So here's a flow diagram showing how high level waste is treated in the UK. In stage 1 the material is removed remotely. Stage 2 the material is cooled underwater for many years. Stage 3, unused uranium and plutonium are removed at a reprocessing plant. Stage 4, the remaining material is placed in a sealed container and then buried deep underground in a secure location. The material can be turned into glass to ensure there's no leakage in the future and the material can be stored in the natural environment as long as the landscape is geologically stable. So we can summarise our radioactive waste and safety protocols with the following. Low level waste is lab equipment and protective clothing. Moderate level or intermediate level waste is containers of radioactive materials and radioactive materials with a low activity, whilst high level waste is spent fuel rods in fuel rod containers. So for low level waste we seal them in metal drums and bury them in large trenches. For moderate level waste we seal them in drums encased in concrete and stored in special buildings with walls of enforced concrete. Whilst for high level air waste, we remove them by remote control, store them underwater for two or three years, any unused uranium and plutonium is removed in a reprocessing plant and the rest is stored in sealed containers and deep trenches. So if we consider our three areas of nuclear safety, well, firstly, we have reactor shielding. So reactor shielding is that when a nuclear reactor is surrounded by thick concrete, it'll act as a shield. This prevents any radiation from escaping and interacting with people around it. You've also got the emergency shutdown procedure in a nuclear reactor. So in an emergency, the nuclear reactor can be shut down by releasing the controls fully into the reactor. This will slow down the fission process as quickly as possible. And finally, you've got handling waste products. So you've got a handle the waste products with great care because it's very hot and very radioactive. So the material is removed from the reactor remotely, placed into cooling ponds to cool and then is stored in sealed containers until the activity has fallen sufficiently. Now when we use nuclear power to generate electricity we've got to weigh up the benefits and the, and the, of nuclear power along with its risks. So what are our benefits of nuclear power? Well firstly we can say that there's a lot of nuclear fuel allowing us to use nuclear power for centuries. Most of this fuel can be found in political friendly and stable countries unlike gas, coal or oil. We use using nuclear power produces less, not none, but less greenhouse gases so it's better for the environment and using nuclear power is a very efficient process so uranium releases much more energy per kilogram than any other fuel. So those are the benefits of using nuclear power. However, what are the risks? Well, the risks are that nuclear reactors have to be designed and built extremely carefully to minimise the, the risk of a nuclear disaster. The nuclear reactors can be produced and can be used to produce nuclear weapons and can be a target for a terrorist attack. We've got to consider how to deal with the waste produced and make sure it doesn't endanger people or the environment. So we've got both our benefits of nuclear power, but also the risks of nuclear power as well. Now, it's important to consider both the risks 
risks and the benefits of nuclear power to make an informed decision about whether to use it in the future. Now, nuclear power will never be a risk-free way of generating electricity, but we need to consider how to make it as safe as possible. So to summarize what we've looked at in today's lesson, we should be able to understand the fuel used, the remote handling of fuel, shielding, and the emergency shutdown procedure. Understand the production, remote handling, and the storage of radioactive waste materials, and have an appreciation of the balance between the risks and the benefits in the development of nuclear power. So if we've been successful and learnt in this revision in this lesson, we should be able to explain how fuel rods can be disposed of, describe how radioactive material is removed from a reactor, and explain the balance and of, of risks and benefits in the development of nuclear power. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on radioactive waste, which is part of the nuclear physics topic in AQA A level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.